kind of talk and about Omaha obviously was pretty nuts too with Texas that yeah. that champion that three game series in Omaha actually Texas we had a bunch of like Texas fans were right behind me in center field and so they were giving me a lot of sh- they were doing the left right left you know I'd give them the I'd give them the shuffle and the crossover to where they couldn't, you know, keep up. And then, uh, and then we ended up, I ended up getting the hit. So I had a bad game. Like I was 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. So I wasn't even close. My fourth at bat into a double play. Then I got a single in my fifth at bat and the game winner in the, in the 11th. And uh, after we got the game winner, a bunch of my buddies had brought a bunch of LSU fans out there and they started talking back to the tech. So it was awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, does it, it kind of evoke a little bit of emotion seeing the Longhorn symbol and a little bit. That was the only time I had played them, right? And then, you know, coincidentally enough, I played against and with some guys that I played against in that in, in professional baseball when I played against my freshman year. Brandon Workman, who I ended up getting the game winning hit off of that year, uh, ended up being becoming a friend. Like I knew him pretty well. Same agency, pitched for the Red Sox. And then um uh, Rupp, their catcher. I played with him in Philly for a year. So it was, um, oh no, not Philly. It was in Detroit when, and the minor leagues in Detroit, I believe for a year. So it was, uh, you know, it's pretty cool to kind of come full circle and see some of those guys that you played with against, you know, so long ago. Um, I really, you know, like I did a, a game pack and I'm like, yeah, Dylan Cruz, 21st birthday, five for six, four RBI. He's the man. Right. Three doubles. Right. Of course. But Braden Jobert might be just as hot. Like, right. Uh, and, and to me, it's the way he talks to us versus last year. Last year, you're just like, yeah, man, he can he can scoop it out of right field. And now it's like this, there's this confidence, man. They're like, yeah, that I was, we were talking about the hole in the swing, right? Uh, before yeah. the season. Like, to me, he's, he's doing, he's in a different process, a different state of mind right now. Is that what you see? Yeah, anytime you come into a new organization like he did last year and a new team or, you know, trying to kind of get your feet wet, you know, somewhere especially that you really wanted to be, you try to, you know, stay a straight line. You try to do the things that you're supposed to do and you try to, you know, make a good impression. Right. So and I think when when you start thinking that way, you don't allow your personality, you don't allow you don't get as comfortable and it takes a little time. And then you know, obviously he's in, going into his second year. He had a really good offseason. He lost a bunch of weight. Apparently. It was like 25 pounds. You can see the difference in the way he carries himself on the field. He's thick, he's quicker. He's faster. He's got a little bit of a quicker bat. His defense has improved tremendously, and I think that goes along with losing a little bit of that weight. And he wasn't like in a bad – he wasn't in bad shape last year. He just – you know, he knows like through the longevity of the season, he wants to be a little bit lighter on his feet. I think that it's been a huge um, a huge benefit to him, right? And I don't think – I think a big misconception – um, and baseball is you have to be big and burly and this guy who can hit a bunch of homers, and that's not really the case, right? A lot of the power in baseball comes from bat speed and quick hands. And, you know, he has obviously the, the raw strength, but um, having the having the bat speed kind of catch up and be a lot more consistent, I think gives him a lot more opportunity to uh, hit mistakes and, and drive balls out of the ballpark around the field. So, you know, I, I was very impressed with him last year. You know, I was, you know, still – trying to play and I was out there you know taking fly balls and kind of working out with the team and he came up to me without knowing me in the outfield and was asking me advice in the outfield how do I need you know what do I need to work on things I need to do to get better to be to be the best outfielder and you know anyone who really asks those types of questions is 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 eager to learn you know I think that you know when you have the talent to go with it I think that you put yourself in a really good position to have a really big season he's obviously doing that uh, Jay, the most interesting thing that I heard from him yesterday when we were talking to him at the availability was um, the player development, but also the recruitment. And he said, you need physicality in the SEC. Now, there are going to be some spots where you have certain skills where it's like, we don't care how tall you are, how big, you know what I mean? You just need to be quick and twitchy and that kind of deal. But man, you look at some of the freshmen. I, I said this yesterday, Chase Shores. I mean, just I'm six yeah. four, and I don't look up to me. Yeah. When I look up to him, uh, right. you know, even a Jared Jones. I mean, some of these freshmen that they've got coming in, there's a reason why they're making an early impact. Yeah, no, absolutely. And obviously, you know, I think over the last, you know, four or so years, 
of the last regime. And this is no slight on them because they obviously recruit really good. They had some top recruiting uh, classes that, you know, at the, at, you know, back in the day, the, the draft was a lot longer and you had, you know, the slots were set, were set up differently. And so some of these guys that were physical and ready to go and ready to play at the next level physically were going to the draft and not coming to college. And so it was a little bit harder to kind of set your team up the way they've set them up now. And now they, I think with NIL and the way that college baseball is and the way that the draft is set up now, um, I think that it's, it's you, you're able to get those guys. And credit Jay for bringing these guys in the portal and bringing these guys in as freshmen. And, uh, you know, I mean, coming in physically ready and really on, on, only trying to work on the, the mental side, trying to be as sharp and as polished as a baseball player and not really having to worry about it physically, I think that's a huge bonus. And, I mean, you're right. These guys are enormous, right? Jared Jones is a – I mean, they call him Bear for a reason, right? Like, he's a, he's a monster. The the pitching staff looks like a basketball team. I mean, you got you go 6'5 to 6'8. Um, I think there's five or six guys that are in that range of 6'5 to 6'8. You know, Dylan Cruz, obviously, his physical hits the ball as hard as anybody, and he's one of the smaller guys in the lineup, right? And so, you when you have that and you have the ability to have guys – up and down lineup to have that physicality. And I don't want to say it's intimidating, but when these guys walk in, you're like, all right, like we got to strap our boots on. Like we got to go, like we're, we're going to have to fight these guys because you know, there's nothing going to be, nothing's given, nothing's easily given to them. Right. And if you make a mistake, anybody in this lineup can, can knock it out of the ballpark. And so, you know, I think that's a big thing, but you also want to be able, you want them to be baseball savvy and you want them to understand the game of baseball and understand you don't want them to be big and burly and not be able to move. You want them to be physical, but you also want them to be athletic. And I think that, you know, Jay's done a very good job of having a nice blend of both. Let's end on the uh, starting pitcher. It's been announced that you're heard. Look, we, we, we know what he can do. We've seen at UCLA, the numbers. Um, now the injury and coming back, he didn't look great in his first start. I think that's probably an understatement. So what are you, as a player, if you were in center field, what would you be looking at going, okay, this guy, he's starting to feel comfortable out there. I, I think maybe we can rock a little bit longer with him. Yeah, obviously everybody's going to – everybody's the first thing people are going to point to is, oh, is he getting ahead in this count, right? Obviously that's number one. But how are you getting ahead in the count, right? Are you just throwing strikes over the middle of the plate and getting lucky and these guys are taking it and fouling balls off? Or are you, are you spotting up and you're hitting your spot and you're staying within yourself? If I was in the outfield and I was watching him and I want to get a good early indicator on how comfortable I thought he was, I would look at tempo and rhythm and how he's getting the ball and how he's on the mound, and how he's attacking these guys, right? And then on top of that, I would say, okay, where is this pitch being called and where is he, where is he throwing it? If he's throwing it where it needs to be and he's spotting up and he's in rhythm and he's kind of controlling the pace of the game, to me, that's how you get – that's how the pitcher controls the game, right? The pitcher has the ball more times than anybody on the field, him and the catcher, right? But he's got the ball. He controls it. He controls the tempo, and it's up to him. Now, with the pitch clock, obviously, they try to speed that up, but you can control the tempo within yourself, right? If you're throwing strikes and you're peppering the strike zone, you're working fast, then that the, the, the hitter is going to be at a disadvantage because now he's got to speed up, right? He's going to have to get up there, and he's going to have to put himself in a position like, damn, this guy's coming at me. I don't have an opportunity to take a breath. So, for me – to see him rebound from last Tuesday to this Tuesday, it's a bigger challenge. It's a better team. I don't put any. I don't put too much stock into his start last week. He had, you know, it's his first one of the year. He hasn't built up yet to the to the guy that he was before the start of last year. He's coming off injury, so you know, I think that if he comes out today and he and he controls the tempo of the game and he's in rhythm and he and he's working ahead in the count, but he's hitting the spots and he's controlling that the the pace of the game. I think what if he does that in the first second inning, I think you're going to start seeing him kind of get in a rhythm and, and kind of get as deep as Jay wants him to go. I don't know what the pitch count is on him. I wouldn't imagine it's very high. I think they're going to try to ease him into it. They have a full bullpen. You know, they have a bunch of guys ready to go behind him. So, um, you know, I think the early indicator would be his tempo and how is he how is he locating and spotting up and where is he pitching. 